This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an adventure, fantasy, romance film called The King's Daughter. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Marie Joseph is the daughter of King Louis XIV, but her existence has to be kept a secret, so she was raised in seclusion in a convent. The nuns taking care of her try to keep her sheltered from the outside world, but she would often escape to swim in the sea. The head abbess once burned her cello and kept her from riding her horse to deter her, but she kept going there despite the cruel punishments. In Versailles, Louis returns victorious to the palace after a long and expensive war. While delivering his victory speech, an assassin shoots him. Fortunately, the wound is not fatal, and he is able to get back on his horse to continue his speech. Despite the king's display of valor, the incident has caused him to realize that he's not immortal. Dr. Laberth treats his wound and tells him that there might be a way to make him live forever. He asserts that the key to immortality can be found in an organ of a legendary sea creature. Soon, Louis commissions fishermen to find the lost city of Atlantis to capture a mermaid. When Captain Yves Delacroix spots the creature, he asks his men to throw the nets and ignite barrels of explosive in the water. The fishermen soon pull their net into the ship and find out they've caught two mermaids. Eve realizes that the other one is male, so he instructs his men to release him because they only need the female. Afterward, Eve sends carrier pigeons to Versailles to inform them that they successfully captured a mermaid. Upon hearing the news, Lamberth tells Louis they need to sacrifice the mermaid during the upcoming solar eclipse so the king can gain eternal life. The king's closest minister, Father Père Lachaise, is skeptical about Labarth's claims but Louis deduces that the doctor will not risk his reputation if he doesn't believe what he's saying. Lachaise sends a message to the convent to invite Marie Joseph to the palace to attend the celebration of the eclipse. Soon after getting a response, Lachaise goes to the convent to retrieve the king's estranged daughter. The head abbess warns Lachaise that Marie Joseph has become rebellious, but the priest is only concerned whether her musical talent is good enough to be welcomed in court. Soon, Marie Joseph leaves the convent with Lachaise and heads to Versailles. Upon her arrival, she's introduced to a young servant named Magali. Later, Louis wakes up to music performed by court musicians, but he finds it boring, so he asks Lachaise to find a new composer right away. As Magali takes Marie Joseph to her room, she surmises that Marie Joseph must have done something important because she got a private quarter so quickly. Although the room doesn't look like much, Marie Joseph is quite happy with it, especially when she sees the view outside. Meanwhile, Lachaise shows the king the last musical piece Marie Joseph wrote at the convent. After taking a brief look at the sheet music, Louis points out that his daughter has talent despite her lack of formal training. Louis tells Lachaise that he will meet Marie Joseph the next day, but he instructs him to keep anyone from knowing that she's his daughter. The next morning, Jean Michel Intiliac, a son of a baron, visits Louis at the palace to present him with a gift for his upcoming birthday. When Louis asks Lentiliac about his father, Lentiliac notes that the Baron is ready to pass into the next world. After Lentiliac leaves, Lachès suggests that Louis may have use for Lentiliac because he will inherit a great fortune. As Marie Joseph makes her way to the king's court later that day, she notices that everyone is staring at her. Mogali notes that she has become an object of intrigue since the king requested for her presence. While waiting for the king, Marie Joseph admires an elegant statue on a fountain. Just as the king arrives, Marie Joseph falls into the fountain after getting distracted by a burst of water. After Magali and Lentiliac pull her out of the fountain, Louis puts his coat over her and tells her that many others have fallen out of balance because of the statue. As the king turns to leave, he instructs Lachesse to move Marie Joseph to a room within the chateau. Magali and Marie Joseph soon move into their new quarters, where they find numerous musical instruments and expensive dresses. When Magali asks which object she'd pick if she can only have one, Marie Joseph notes that she prefers the cello because it represents her freedom. That same day, Eve and his men take the mermaid into an artificial cave the king had built to confine the creature. Eve explains to the fishermen that the structure is connected to an underground river that brings water from the ocean. Back in the chateau, the king comes across a book recounting that the female mermaid has fallen into a lethargic trance after being separated from the male. Labarth, however, dismisses it as a drunken seaman's commentary. When the king comes to see the mermaid, Eve informs them that the creature is at the bottom of the water because it is weak and traumatized by the journey. Louis asks Eve to help the mermaid recover before the eclipse. He promises to grant Eve a royal pardon if he succeeds, but he assures him that he will be punished horribly if he fails. While Marie Joseph is trying to compose music in a room, she hears extraordinary music outside. She immediately leaves the chateau with her cello to locate the source of the music. Soon, Marie Joseph reaches the cave and sees the mermaid. 
As the mermaid tries to communicate with her, Eve arrives and grabs Marie Joseph. When he asks what she's doing there, Marie Joseph explains that the mermaid called out to her with her music. Marie Joseph then tells Eve that she wants to use the mermaid's music so the king and the whole world can hear it. As Marie Joseph plays her cello, the mermaid responds by singing along. The following day, Marie Joseph and the court musicians perform the music inspired by the mermaid to wake up the king. Louis is pleased with the music and remarks that it's something that he's never heard before. He tells Lachesse to invite Marie Joseph to the grand ball that will be held later that night. When Marie Joseph arrives at the ball, the women stare at her with envy because of her unique look. Louis asks Lintiliac to dance with her, but Marie Joseph notes that she doesn't know how. The king teaches her, and it goes well for a while, until Louis lets go of Marie Joseph's hand when he remembers how he once danced with her mother. That night, Marie Joseph visits the mermaid to tell her about the ball. When Eve arrives, the mermaid hides, so Marie Joseph tells him that the creature is scared of him because he feeds her dead fish. Marie Joseph then tells Eve that she likes being in the cave because she loves the water. She notes that she spent a lot of time by the sea because it's the only place she could go to escape from her prison in the convent. Later, Labarth tells Louis that he has confirmed that a life force emanates from the mermaid's heart. He then reveals his plan to drain the water from the cave and kill the creature to harvest her organ. The next day, Marie Joseph finds Louis drawing a picture of a woman in the garden. Louis tells her that the statue in the fountain represents Louise de Lavalier, a woman he used to draw. He notes that no other woman reminds him of Louise except for Marie Joseph. Soon, Lintiliac's father dies, so Louis announces he will be appointed duke during the celebration of the solar eclipse. That night, even the fishermen tell the king and members of the nobility about their encounters with the barracudas in the sea. When Eve notes that they fled from the barracuda, Lintiliac remarks that they're either cowards or weaklings because they didn't kill their prey. The two men almost get into a fight when Eve calls Lintiliac a fool for only seeing two choices, but Louis stops them. In the morning, Eve and Marie Joseph go horseback riding around the palace and come across Lintiliac and his friends shooting ducks. When Marie Joseph asks why he hates Lintiliac, Eve reveals that Lintiliac accused him of theft and had him arrested when he delivered goods for them some time ago. Suddenly, Marie Joseph races Eve along the woods, but she hits a tree branch when she gets distracted by a gunshot. When Labyrinth examines her, he learns that her arm is badly broken. He proposes to amputate it, claiming that it's prescribed procedure, but Marie Joseph refuses. Later that night, the mermaid tells Eve that she wants to help Marie Joseph, so Eve sneaks into her room and carries her to the cave. Soon, after Eve puts Marie Joseph in the water, the mermaid swims in circles around her while releasing her life force. By morning, Marie Joseph can play with court musicians as if her arm was never injured. Later, Marie Joseph tells Louis that the mermaid healed her injury and even gave her the ability to breathe underwater for a moment. Labyrinth contends that it's incontrovertible proof of the mermaid's powers. Marie Joseph deduces that the king must have brought the mermaid to Versailles because he's ill. However, Louis contends that he's in perfect health and claims that he brought the creature there for the old servants of France. Marie Joseph showers him with praise, thinking he'll use the mermaid's power to heal the common people. She asks if he intends to release the mermaid after healing the sick, but Louis gives her a vague response, saying the creature will end up where God intends her to be. That same day, Eve tells Marie Joseph that the king brought the mermaid there for himself, not for France. However, Marie Joseph still believes that Louis has good intentions for the mermaid. Later, Eve takes Marie Joseph to the side of Versailles, where fishermen like him live. At the lighthouse, Eve tells her that his dream is to sail away from Versailles. When he asks Marie Joseph about her dream, she tells him that she wants the mermaid to be released so she can come with her. Eve then takes Marie Joseph to the Temple of Love, an exquisite structure in the middle of a garden. As he explains the history of the structure, Marie Joseph suddenly kisses him. In the palace, Louis asks Lintiliac to accept Marie Joseph's hand in marriage and reveals that she's his daughter. In response, Lintiliac gladly tells the king that he will be honored to marry her. The following day, Louis gives Marie Joseph a pendant with her mother's picture and hints that he and her mother were together until she decided to abandon court life. Louis then reveals that her mother went to the convent and died in childbirth. When Marie Joseph realizes that he's her father, Louis confesses that he's been terrible and selfish because he cared more about France than her. Despite acknowledging his shortcomings, Louis asks Marie Joseph to make a sacrifice for the country and marry Lintiliac for his money. Marie Joseph expresses her objections, but Louis tells her that it's an order and she must obey. One night, Lachesse visits the mermaid and realizes that she's a sentient being with a soul. He later tells Labyrinth that he will condemn the king to eternal damnation if they kill the mermaid to avoid death. When Marie Joseph tries to leave her room that night, she finds out that there's a guard outside, so she goes out through the window to visit the mermaid. 
Upon reaching the cave, the creature shows her the memories of her capture to reveal that she left her baby to another mermaid before she got caught. During a meeting with the king, Lachess warns him that he will commit a mortal sin if he kills the mermaid. Louis, however, thinks that God has allowed him to capture the mermaid so he can continue leading France. That same night, even his friends sneak into Labyrinth's room and discover papers indicating that he'll kill the mermaid. Later, his friend lures a guard outside Marie Joseph's room so he can slip one of the papers under the door. Labyrinth catches Eve and instructs a guard to lock him up, but he's unaware of the paper he put in Marie Joseph's room. When Marie Joseph returns to her room, she finds the paper and realizes that Labarth intends to kill the mermaid. On the day of the eclipse, Marie Joseph confronts the king and tells him that she will only marry Lentiliac if he releases the mermaid back into the sea. However, Louis refuses to negotiate and instructs musketeers to take Marie Joseph back to her room to prepare for the wedding. Later that day, Labarth asks Eve to drain the water in the cave so he can prepare to sacrifice the mermaid. Meanwhile, Marie Joseph asks Lachesse to help her escape from her room to see the creature. Lachesse leaves her for a while so she can get into her wedding dress. Upon his return, Lachesse convinces a guard to let Marie Joseph go by claiming that he will be taking her to confession. When Marie Joseph arrives in the cave, she sees Eve preparing to drain the water. Eve is reluctant to do it, but he notes that he and his friends will die if they don't obey the orders. When Eve learns that Marie Joseph is defying the king by refusing to marry Lentiliac, he decides to help her release the mermaid. He instructs the other fishermen to set sail for the cliff of Luavre immediately to prepare for their escape. Marie Joseph and Eve activate the water wheels to drain water from the chateau so the mermaid can get over the wall and go through the underground river. Soon, Labyrinth arrives at the cave with the guards to stop them from helping the mermaid. While Eve is climbing a water wheel, a guard shoots at him, so Eve swings on a rope to slam into the guard and knock him out. Afterward, he grabs the guard's gun and uses it to kill another man attempting to shoot him. Eve then goes after Labyrinth and catches up to him on a small bridge. As they struggle to subdue each other, Labyrinth manages to take control of the gun and shoot him. Eve and Labyrinth both fall into the water, but Labyrinth soon emerges, hanging onto the water wheel. He tries to attack Marie Joseph, but she knees him in the groin and hits him in the head with a chain. Marie Joseph then asks the mermaid to take Eve with her and flee. Soon, Labyrinth gets up, but his foot gets caught in a rope. Marie Joseph grabs a hook at the end of the rope and attaches it to the water wheel which pulls the doctor into the water. Before long, Marie Joseph sees the mermaid jumping over the wall while carrying Eve. Moments later, Marie Joseph leaves the cave and heads to the cliff of Luavre on horseback. When Louis learns about her escape, he immediately heads to the cliffs with his guards and orders his ships to intercept the fishermen. Soon, Marie Joseph reaches the edge of the cliff and discovers that the king's ships are already there to block the fishermen. When Louis and his men arrive, Marie Joseph threatens to jump if they attempt to take her. She expresses her disappointment in her father because she thinks he doesn't care about her, but Louis asks her to give him a chance to prove her wrong. Suddenly, the mermaid emerges from a tunnel with Eve, who has now fully recovered from his wound. As the moon starts to cover the sun, Louis orders his musketeers to prepare to shoot the mermaid. Marie Joseph tells him that he can kill the mermaid to gain eternal life, but if he lets her live, the creature will save her when she jumps. After dropping the pendant Louis gave to her, Marie Joseph jumps off the cliff. Louis orders the musketeers to stand down to allow the mermaid to heal Marie Joseph. After seeing that Marie Joseph has recovered, the mermaid quickly flees. Lachesse tells Louis that he has always been a great king, but he has become a great man for what he just did. As he watches Marie Joseph and Eve swim to the fisherman's ship, he asks his musketeers to signal his fleet to retreat. Eve and Marie Joseph go on to search for the lost city of Atlantis to reunite with the mermaid. Upon reaching the sunken city, Marie Joseph dives into the water and finds the mermaid with her child. Before long, the mermaid lets Marie Joseph ride on her back to take her on a tour of the magical city. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.